Okay, so I hope everybody can hear me. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Zirconia 2.0. Um, the current state of the art of dental zirconia. So my name is Axel Reichert. I'm the team leader of materials uh, at the R&D development department at Amagerbach headquarter. And I want to show you why zirconia is called zirconia 2.0, so what makes it so special today. And first of all, just the information for you. We will record this session, and if your internet connection is unstable, like sound or video, Please don't worry, we will forward you a download link for, of the video to all of you after the session that you can review it anyway. So, Zirconia 2.0. It's a perspective of R&D, so um, the research and development uh, does a lot on Zirconia since 10 years now. And um, as you can see here, a uh, zirconia blank of us with all the typical properties on the left side, like mechanical properties, long-term stability, biocompatibility, and microstructure. All this is certainly done at uh, uh, research uh, on, on the blanks. But all this is partly normative, so that means that you have to do all this testing anyway. Every manufacturer has to do this anyway. Um, without doing this, you will not get the certification, and uh, it is a medicine product only then, and then you can sell it on the market. But this is all nothing special in our view that makes a zirconia to a zirconia 2.0. Every manufacturer has to do all this stuff on the left side, and uh, we do a lot more on our blanks um, that will you directly you can feel in your lab. So this testing here like bending strength and uh, biocompatibility tests are done by our own or by accredited laboratories and leads to the certification. And some of these um, values you may find also in your instruction manual, uh, like you can see here between the, the different um, zirconia generations from Ceramel set E to FX or FX multilayer. And for you, maybe the most interesting thing is the bending strength, three or four point bending strength. You want to know that because you don't want uh, to break or want to do, you do not want to broken, have broken um, material in your lab. And more, the thermal expansion value, for example, the CTE value is also important for you that you can choose the right veneering material that you don't have chipping. So these two parameters uh, you also can feel in your lab, but you have to be sure that our zirconia can be processed in your lab perfectly. And this ensure, we ensure in our production already, so when we go from milling to finalization, we have a lot of steps where the blank itself has to be processed and has to work properly. So a lot of other behaviors or other properties and features um, can be um, brought into a blank and we can take about uh, take care about this. For example, the milling, millability of course is very important, edge stability and the tool wear and brittleness. So you don't want to have broken blanks in your machine. You want to have a blank that is very good and easy to be colored. It must sinter perfectly. It must be um, have a nice translucency, and the veneering must work properly. So all this is is done on our blank and tested uh, from the beginning to the end. So all these application-related properties are not normative. So nobody says us you have to do this, but we take care about these properties. So when we start, for example, with the first three one, brittleness, millability, edge stability, tool wear, that means that the blank is very easy to mill and you have tools that um, have low um, level of wear. So it starts in our production, like here in the dentistry one, we are pressing and pre-sintering the material. That means that the particles are brought together and pressed with a high force and then is pre-sintered so we have a little necking of the particles and you can make a lot of mistakes already in this step, but these production steps are the most important for the blanks. So the necking is uh, important because you need a certain st stability while milling. It has not to be too soft or too hard. And you need some remaining porosity that is always homogeneous and the same, um, that you have always the same amount of coloring liquid in the blank. Otherwise, your color will be completely different from time to time. And 
the milling ability is not only done by the pre certain pre-sintering temperature in the, in the furnace, it's also tested after pre-sintering with a lot of cases from our customers. As you see here, we collect the difficult cases for milling from our help desk, put it to a blank and make um, a lot of uh, testing and milling about six, seven blanks and then we count little or small defects and with a matrix we then um, be checking if the blank is presented well or not. Is it good for the customer to mill it in your lab? So you can see here very thin, thin margin parts and a nice surface. So all this is uh, very important for you and we can and we have to check this in your product. So when, when you take a look at the blank side, you always have to take a look at the burr side as well. The tools, you have uh, cutting edges at the tools. So after milling a lot, you have to check these cutting edges, like you can see here. So the cutting edges, um, you under a microscope, an electron microscope, you see the differences between, for example, a green body, a white body, and a nearly sintered body. So this here is with all the binder inside. This is pre-sintered without binder with some remaining porosity. And this is with a too high pre-sinting temperature. It's a higher density already at the blank. So you see directly how the edges um, are um, wired. So you, you have a directly uh, direct dependent between tool lifetime and edge stability. So of course you have a high edge stability where you have a um, very hard blank but your tool is, is uh, wired after a few a few units. And so we have to always to get the, the right middle point between everything. Yeah. After milling this blank and presented and milling this blank, we have to color it. So the colorability is very important to get uh, nice and stable color results. So how is this done at our place? You can see here, for example, a lot of different colors you can make on zirconia. So you have a lot of different ions. It's like a metal salt and uh, you need all these different ions to have, for example, nice tooth colors, to have a little effect colors. So you have a big matrix um, where you can choose uh, to get a nice Vita color. So in the first step, we only um, measure the colors because we have to get a reproducibility and uh, um, measurable color we can always reproduce and um, measure for our testing when there is any complaint. So we're producing discs like this and for example here you see in the center you see uh, in, the, in the space of color you see where the Vita color has to be and we make a lot of samples until we get the point. It's like a virtual dart game uh, in color science and we measure it with a special reflect, uh, reflection spectrometer. But in the end, um, we on, do not only measure it and make plates out of it. So the last word always has our customer. So we, made a, we make a lot of testing with our different types of coloring, like brushing or dipping and uh, festetics. So every workflow we, we uh, offer to the customer has to has to work. So we have a special crown made with different thicknesses and color it in a different way and the customers has, have to say is the color good or not and this is the last word. So after we've colored it, sintering behavior is also very important. We have to test this very well because as you can see here, when we choose the wrong sintering temperature for a certain generation of material, you have a different behavior. Here, for example, you see when you are sintering it with a too low temperature, of course, you still have porosity and the, the um, stability is not there. So when you sinter it too high, you have very large grains. That's not a big problem when you just have large grains, but when you take a look at uh, the stability, for example, it goes down immediately when you have too high sintering temperatures. Otherwise, translucency, for example, or here in this case, its opacity, it goes down rapidly. Uh, this goes down rapidly and this is increased a little bit. So we always testing the right sintering temperature and say 
this or that temperature is the right one in your lab because 1450 degrees or a little bit higher is still good that you have still a little bit more space in the stability and it does not go down already. So to have very high temperatures just to get a little bit more translucency is uh, very bad because of, of losing a lot of stability. Isotropic shrinkage and fitting. The next step, what can we do here? When you take a look at the, uh, the shrinkage, you always have a magnification and a shrinkage in zirconia, you know that very well. We always have to magni magnify it uh, that it can shrink the same way and this needs to be calculated. So normally you can calculate it easily isotropic, that means you have uh, the densities, the final and white densities and you can calculate how the volume shrinkage is and um, this value is then on the blank. But we have always a little bit different behaviors in a blank when you press it because it's not a ball, it's a flat, a flat disc. So we have to measure all three dimensions of a blank in all three room, di room directions and uh, respect these values uh, in your calculation. So we calculate it in a special way that you have here all the, f the codes and factors for your And um, so it's very important that we have a, a very exact factor here. So every blank is calculated single. So it's not a, a batch um, calculation. So every single blank is calculated on its own way. And this makes the fitting, the, the basic of the good fitting. So it's important because, as you can see here, we have uh, to do a lot of fittings that come together from implants to big bridges. So this is only possible if you guarantee an isotropic shrinkage in every direction. So color, color again. So that's not only a color coloring liquid possible to color your zirconia. You always have uh, now pre-shaded blanks on the market as well, or like our FX pre-shaded or FX multi-layer. This is done by um, doped powders with um, special pigments in there. You can see here white, gray, pink, or yellow. And now you have to get 16 beta shades out of three or four colored, um, colored powders. So in the, in the beginning, you think it's not possible, but you can you can make it possible, but yeah, there you also have to respect the, the geometry, the form and the thickness of the material. So what we also do is that we always um, mill the Vita tooth, the original Vita tooth as well, that we have the ideal comparison. And then the shading in our blanks is done individually. So we have a lot of coloring zones in your blanks uh, in your in your tooth, and uh, you know maybe that uh, in the anterior region you need uh, the animal part a little bit more gray or a little bit more yellow downwards. So it's not only a, a gradient of the brightness; it's always in every zone a special certain mixture, a single mixture. So the full color shade transition is uh, done every every time individual from zone to zone, and this. Range ma arrangement makes it possible to have 16 Vita colors in the end that per, uh, that match perfectly. Also very important when you're developing the colors is here again, for example, the sintering temperature and the behavior. So when you just bring two colors very hard for, to one, uh, one color over the other colors, like here white and yellow, you bring it just together by pressing it and then you make a, a heat a thermal t treatment on the blank, then you see what happens with the, with the ions of the pigments. So the color, the, um, the, the powder is not uh, diffusion. So only diffusion is on the ions, on the metal ions. So you can see the higher the color, uh, the higher the temperature, the more the color is uh, going from one material to the other. But as you see here, for example, between 1450 degrees and 1550 degrees, some people just go higher with the temperature to have a little bit more translucency. But you see that the pigments 
are changed. So we have here more color and here less color. So an A3 becomes maybe in B2 when you just change the hinting temperature. So that's important why we have always to check the whole system that the furnace is working well and the blank as well and only in combination with our recommended sintering temperatures on each blank you can guarantee um, a very good uh, coloring result. And as you can see here when we have uh, for example a FX multi-layer coloring that the more color you have in a blank from the up from up to downwards here um, then you also have losing uh, translucency or, or opacity goes up and that's a natural effect so it's good that we have more opacity here down here and more translucency up here so um, we somebody uh, is just making marketing on that that they have uh, a gradient in the translucency made for you this is just an automatic or natural effect every shaded or translucent shaded blank has anyway. Okay, translucency. Translucency is also very interesting when you compare different materials like PMMA or zirconia or metal then it's clear this is transparent, this is translucent and this is opaque but you also can make a really full transparent zirconia. So you can see here a pure cubic zirconia also with doping with colors so it's like window glass so we have to find the right composition between the translucency transparent and opaque and this is done by the by the blanks by the doping of the blanks with the yttria so when I started 10 years ago we just had tetragonal zirconia a long time and this was a set ear or solid yeah, there with a little bit reducing of alumina but it was full, trans, uh, full uh, tetragonal and now the new generations like FX or now HT plus as well as, is a, a mixture between cubic and tetragonal material. So that means when you have a little less tetra, a little less cubic material, the translucency is still not so high, but the strength of the tetragonal material is fully there. And when you change this, then you have a lot of cubic material, then the translucency is very high. But of course, of the less amount of tetragonal material, the strength goes down. This is the reason why we have different indica indication ranges for these materials. And this all is controlled by the content of yttria and the phase that comes out. So in the moment, because of this arrangement, you can do a lot of stuff on zirconia. That's all the reason why we call it zirconia 2.0, because this has never been done so intensively than in the last two, three years to develop materials like that. So when you take a look at the grain structure, it's also interesting. You see here, ZE or solid, um, you see HT plus and FX material, you see clearly the, the amount of translucency that comes out and this is the grain structure. So you have much larger grains at the FX material but these large grains are not like the 1600 degree grains, the two big grains that can become monolithic. These grains are cubic so they are stable again and resistant against aging as well. So have large grains instead of small grains is not always bad. It just uh, it's just important what kind of grains there are. When you heat this normal tetragonal material up very high, then the grains become as big like this here, but they are not cubic. They are monocline, and so they are not stable. Venerability. Of course, that's important for you. You see here tetragonal zirconia and cubic zirconia. So the CTE value here is fitting to the CTE range of a veneering porcelain. That's very important because uh, otherwise it will get chipping. So when you heat it up to a very high temperature, the normal tetragonal zirconia, and you're getting big grains, then you get big monocline grains, and they have a completely different, a much smaller CTE value below the porcelain uh, veneering material and that, that means that the fitting, uh, that the, the chipping can happen, that the uh, adhesion is not there anymore. So that's the reason why we designing all the materials to a certain temperature like 1450 or 1500 degrees and not higher, not to get this 
monocline uh, phase. And in the end, surface quality, also very important for you and your patients. The zirconia must be polished and this must go very well. So when you have, for example, a bad material with a lot of remaining porosity, uh, then you have already um, also more roughness because you have these holes and the water can go in there and then you have a, a changing of the structure by hydrothermal changing and it becomes more rough automatically. It's also important but when you uh, grind it, for example, that you have polished it and it is ver it's very good to polish zirconia, you can see here, and it is absolutely important to polish it and not to let it just grind it because it is very hard. But hardness itself is not the big problem. Just the surface quality is important. This last study here, for example, is uh, showing the cobalt chrome alloy as a as a, a control group. You see here the cobalt chrome and here the antagonist. And this is what works in the mouth in uh, 10, 20, 30 years. So when you need when you take a look at veneer zirconia or glazed zirconia, of course the glaze, for example, on monolithic crowns or some veneering material as well is going away very fast, very quickly, very quickly. And so that's very important that you polish it, like here, below or under the, the glaze. Because when the glaze is going away, then the polished surface remains just at the contact points. It's important to polish it because then you have much less wear than here, for example. Like the control group or not so even so much. Huh? But it's also very important, like you see here, here's a crack in the antagonist, that it's important because of zirconia is very hard, that you do not use it on patients like do have bruxism or so. But when you work correctly on it, you have a good material that you can polish very good, and you're glazing it uh, on the polished uh, surface, then you will not have a problem because it looks like that. Okay, so in the end, when all this is done, tested and checked, then the material is passed. So not only the normative requirements are fulfilled, also the application related properties are fulfilled and this makes uh, zirconia special and good and uh, this is why we called it, called it also zirconia 2.0 because it's not only a new generation of material, we also found out a lot of know-how and research and, and uh, experience on that. Uh, what is important in the production and to, till the end uh, to the dental lab, what he has to, to check in her lab as well. So I'm in the end. I hope it was very informative for you. Thank you very much.